Living in a metropolitan city is easy if you're a vegan. There are a million vegan spaces where you can go and get any type of vegan meals. But what happens when you're home alone with your fridge? Now, being a vegan is inexpensive and it's healthy and it also teaches you how to burn in the kitchen and provide healthy meals for your family. I'm here today with the plant-powered chefs, Mona and Raj, and they're taking on the task of showing me how to cook a savory dish that I can eat at any time. Let's get this food burning. I'm Angela Yvonne, and this is Vegan Pop Eats. I'm here with the plant powered chefs. This is Mona and this is Raj and they are here to help me learn a little bit more about cooking in the kitchen. Now I cook a little bit, but I have my little go-tos, but they are on the next level. Thank you so much for allowing me to come in and you show me how to cook. It's uh, our thanks. pleasure to have you here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mona. So tell me a little bit about why you decided to get together and make plant powered chefs. Sure. So let me tell you why we started Plant Power Chefs. Mm -hmm. When we started our journey to be plant-based, we had the support of our friends and community around us. And from the very beginning, we knew that we wanted to be a part of the change. Yes. And that's why we started Plant Power Chefs. We wanted to help people eat more plants. Yes. I love someone who wants to help us eat more plants. It's good for the environment. So with you, Raj, what was your reasoning as far as you know, to piggyback on what Mona said. Yeah, so, you know, kind of going and elaborating a little bit, we uh, were traditionally vegetarian. I grew mm -hmm. up in a vegetarian ho household. Mona has been a lifelong vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And initially we weren't trying to go plant-based, um, but we st the evidence started becoming overwhelming. Uh, we realized that we were motivated by our own health Mm -hmm. And being plant-based is one of the best things that you can do for your health or eating more plants is one of the best things that you can do for your health. Um, and as well, it's the single biggest thing that you can do to combat climate change. Right. And so we went to a screening of the Game Changers movie and we were just educating ourselves. And I think along with finding people in our communities that were there to support us, it just was the right moment for us. Well, I'm super excited. And you guys are going to show me the Pantry 101. So these are the basics that you should have in your pantry when you're just getting started and you're just trying to get a little bit more familiar in your kitchen. So you ready? Yeah, follow us. Yes, yes. Follow us. Okay. And the one thing I find that being a vegan, a lot of people are like overwhelmed as in what to buy, what they should have as a staple in their pantry. Show us what you have in your pantry and let us know why you decide to have those products. Sure, Angela. Let me show my pantry to you. Yes! Uh, so, on the right, on the left, you can see I have a couple lentils here, and on my right, we have a whole section of beans. Right. So, coming up, like chickpeas, lima beans or butter beans, black beans, red beans, and my favorite, favorite um, lentil is mm -hmm. mung beans, yellow mung beans, uh, which I cook my stew with. The challenge with dry beans is that they often take a bit of foresight to say, hey, I'm going to make this dish on a certain day. Certainly for things like chickpeas and black beans and your larger beans, you'll want to soak those overnight. Mm -hmm. um, but things like what Mona was talking about, these yellow mung beans, they're smaller and they generally only require 20 or 30 minutes of soaking. Uh, the other thing that you really have to keep in mind with dry beans is that they do uh, grow in size. So okay. when you're considering your serving sizes, um, for example, you need to know that, okay, if I'm going to want one cup of chickpeas or two cups of chickpeas yield, uh, I'll do, to make two cups of um, chickpeas that I can cook, I'll want to soak one cup of the dried chickpeas. Okay. So, so would you say that um, these, this takes a little bit more time, but what would be the difference? Because a lot of people might not have, I don't know if it's more cost effective to get the dry beans first or to, to get the cans. Because every time that I go to like the grocery stores and things of that nature, I always see where they're on sale. But then it seems like you get more 
when you do dry. Is that also a reasoning behind um, you deciding to get dry beans as well? That's definitely a consideration. Mm -hmm. But you know, time is money too. Absolutely. And sometimes if you don't have a lot of time or if you didn't think about it beforehand, we definitely keep some canned beans on hand because sometimes life gets away from you. Right, absolutely. Right? Um, and uh, so certainly um, it's more cost effective. Okay. But again, it's a time thing. We're about to get started to get the save reports on deck, but first we need to know what type of ingredients that is used for this porridge. Yeah, so um, we have here some semolina. Mm -hmm. People also know it as cream of wheat or grits or polenta. And this is uh, dry unroasted semolina, mm -hmm. which we've just toasted in a pan slightly. It takes maybe about 30 seconds if you get a nice hot pan. Okay. Just watch it up, it doesn't burn. We also have a half cup of green peas, uh, which is great for protein. Um, the great thing about this dish is that you can sub it with everything, anything that you have. So sometimes if you don't have green peas and you have carrots or broccoli or cauliflower, anything, just throw it in there. Okay. Um, the other thing that we have here that's worth noting is these white lentils. These are called urad dal. Urad dal. Yeah, it's okay. U-R-A-D. Okay. And um, these are one of those dried beans that don't need a lot of time to soak because they're so thin. And so they're perfect for this dish. You can just add them dry when you fry up the chilies and the ginger and it'll take on that flavor mm -hmm. and that salt um, and be absolutely fantastic. So I've never heard of this um, lentil. Is this something that I can find in a can also or is it just mostly dry? This is, I, I, have, I have rarely seen this in a can, okay. uh, if ever, I don't think. So you'll want to get these dry. Okay. Um, this is available in international food stores, okay. Indian food stores, but I think you can get everything in Whole Foods these okay. days. Okay, cool. I learned something new. <laughs> so we can get started. Absolutely. And so I'm just going to move my way over here okay. and get my pan roasting. Um, as I told you, there's certain number of things that we did uh, beforehand to prepare for this. We toasted up this semolina. We also cut up some green chili, grated some ginger. There's cumin here. There's a handful of that urad dal and some chopped cashew nuts. We're also going to put some cashews on top with cilantro. But the first step here is just to get this in a hot saucepan. I'm just going to throw it all together like this. So are we sauteing this yep. together? Okay. We're just developing a little bit of color and flavor from the ginger and the chilies. And uh, once this starts to heat, we'll, um, we'll add in our semolina. Okay. We also have water boiling here. And this comes together really easily because you just add in the hot water mm -hmm. to your semolina once everything is roasted. And within seconds, you have a full meal. While this is toasting and just toasting away, it's a good time to also let you know, we, we talked about how this is a great dish because it's so versatile. Mm -hmm. And you can make, we're doing a savory version today, but you can also make a sweet version. A okay. lot of people have this as a breakfast. Okay. Um, and they'll, uh, for this we're using just water, but if you're having it as a breakfast, you might want to use um, almond milk, or something to make it a little bit of creamier. The important thing to note is uh, simply that for uh, the ratio is four to one of liquid to dry. So we have about a half cup of um, semolina here. So we're gonna add two cups of the boiling water. And if we were gonna do it with almond milk, two cups of almond milk, or if we wanna do half and half, a cup of water and a cup of almond milk. But again, the great thing about this dish is that it's so, so versatile. I see. Oh my gosh, I can start to smell it already. Yeah, we get this toasting away. So do I need, it, are you toasting it just dry with no oil or anything like that? No oil. Um, we, we cook uh, most of our food whole foods plant-based. Okay. Sometimes when you're making stir fry, you need a little bit of that sesame oil to really get right. that taste of Chinese. Right. But um, we make everything uh, oil-free. Oh, so you do everything with water? Yes. You know, I haven't learned how to do that because I'm always afraid that I don't put enough water in it and then... Uh, no, just, this is just meant to uh, be there so that when I add the water, I can okay. just start to mix it. So awesome. I'm going to grab brown. You didn't add the green peas. <laughs> I will. Okay. Awesome. Oh. Around. Wow. So the hot, so the boiling water... It's, it's really 
really important that the water is boiling mm -hmm. because if it's not boiling, it'll clump. Okay. The uh, the semolina. So I'm glad that you asked that question. So oh my gosh, now I'm just gonna throw so in good. the cheese, and I'm gonna add some salt to taste. Okay. This is gonna be in my hand about um, half a tablespoon, Ooh, teaspoon of salt. The salt made my heart jump because my <laughs> my roommate is just like you never salt anything because I use um, Himalayan salt. So is is there a preference between sea salt and Himalayan? Um, the I think that you know. This is sea salt and it has mm -hmm. a lot of the same minerals and nutrients that mm -hmm. people like about Himalayan salt. Right. One of the knocks on this iodized table salt or this manufactured salt is that it doesn't have the iron and the minerals, the natural stuff that comes. Okay. And so this will have some of that. I'm not sure on how much better or worse right. it is Himalayan. Oh my god, that looks so amazing. This is just coming together. It reminds me of grits. Yeah. And um, it's nearly done. So wow. this is just stewing away here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw this cover on it for a little okay. bit. And let it, it finish in the steam. Okay. So it's almost like cooking it like quinoa. That's right. Okay. And now I'm just going to go over here. And just, I have some cilantro here. It mm -hmm. just adds a nice little flavor on the top and a little color. Okay. Look at those knife skills. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm also gonna add these cashew nuts. Okay. So I'm gonna take this like this, and once this is out, I'm going to plate it for us. Okay. And um, we're gonna give it to you to try. We'll grab a spoon for you here. I'm so excited. Yep, and this is done now. So here we go. That was quick. Yeah, it's amazing. And you can see that it has the green peas. By adding them at the end, they retain uh, that brilliant, vibrant green color. I'm just going to add them like this. Give this a little thing like this. Add some cashews. And this is for you to taste. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, this smells so good. Mm, mm, mm. And I love food. I love food. I'm just so excited. Hold on. Let me get a. Super hot. Yes. But it smells so. I'm gonna take a little bit with you. Oh my god. This is really good. Like I'm not even for the camera in terms of you not reaching your protein goal. Right. Um, most, of, most people don't have to worry about how much protein they're taking in. We do work with some athletes as clients mm -hmm. and they have very specific needs for the amount of macros they need because they're pushing their body to extreme. Right. But I would say that you can get all the protein you need and more from just eating a varied, healthy, plant-based diet. So let me ask you this question since you said that a lot of people um, are wary about like supplements because I take supplements like B12, um, I take D3, um, iron, and I'm learning that I need to start taking like omega threes and things of that nature. So I can find all that without um, going without using supplements, just doing my plant-based diet is what you're saying. Or do you say that you do need supplements additional to your plant-based diet? This is a challenging question because we're all a little bit different. And right. I think it depends on the nature of your deficiency. Okay. Um, certainly for things like omega-3s and um, B12, it's harder to find. Um, but if you eat a lot of nuts and seeds, right. you can get your omega-3s uh, pretty easily. And certainly we have nutritional yeast and I actually do take a B12 supplement. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, generally we don't want to advise people to say, you know, use your supplements or not. That's something right. you want to work with your doctor. Right. But um, it is the case that depending on the nature of your deficiency, if maybe you're only a little bit far behind, right. then you might need to up your intake of some other plant foods that are, um, have those kinds of things naturally in them. But do you have a different take? 
Um, I don't prefer any kind of supplements. <laughs> I don't have any deficiencies. Right. Um, we use a nutritional yeast that mm. is uh, fortified with B12. Yes. So we get our B12 from that and also um, take the B B12 supplements. So, yeah. So Mona is saying, I don't do supplements because I got this. And Rod is saying he does take supplements. And that's good information to know because as we go on as being vegans, you know, we're just trying to get everyone, you know, on the same page as far as, you know, climate control, as mm -hmm. far as, you know, just being a little bit more healthier. And the more that we get that information out, you know, just from our own experiences, I think more people are more likely to, you know, want to join us. It's not a cult. <laughs> it's not a cult. It's just, you know, just a lifestyle that just makes you a little bit more aware of just things in general, because I've said this before, me becoming vegan, I've become more compassionate. I've been more concerned about just things that are going into my body, you know, because it's always been said that, you know, vegetables is medicine. And once you get that idea, it doesn't seem so overwhelming. So what is next for the plant-based chefs? Well, we do, um, one of the ways that we talk about being part of this change mm -hmm. because I do think it's a movement and yes. I do think there's a lot of people that are motivated maybe not to um, fully transition we try not right. to vilify people for their life choices absolutely and I think one thing that everybody can agree on is that you should be eating more plants absolutely um, even the hardest carnivores will tell you that yeah I can eat more spinach okay right. so we have that common ground so we try to lean into that and you know the, the way that we make impact we talked about it before is um, we have a home catering business. Absolutely. We serve clients on a weekly basis doing batch cooking for families, making eating plants more accessible. Um, we also do catering for events, birthdays, and there's not a whole lot of plant-based and that to Whole Foods plant-based caterers. We work with seniors that might have sodium requirements and such like that. So we try to be um, most inclusive with our food. In fact, a lot of uh, offices are coming to us and saying that we need plant-based catering because it is the most inclusive food. Right. A lot of it is already naturally gluten-free, dairy-free, um, so it's just the right thing to do if you want to have an inclusive, diverse workplace. Mm -hmm. But you asked what's next for us, and the, the last part of how we try to make an impact is doing these kind of cooking demos. Certainly, like we're happy to have you here and showcasing what we've made. Um, we go in. Let me eat some more. <laughs> we go in home to these demos, but we also do them for our community. So excited! Thank you so much for this, and Mona. <laughs> you have a good one. <laughs> Thank you.